This is chapter number 8 arrays. What will be the output of the following program? We have an array with dimension 26 and then this is the first number. This is the last number means last location of the array where 100 is stored and 200 is stored at the this first location last location. Now this code is actually swapping the numbers. If I can show you this is the 0th po position where 100 is being placed. This is the 25th position where your the other number 200 is being placed. So a temporary variable here is taken. This 100 is given to this see this 100 is given to temp and this 200 is transferred here 0 has been transferred to hit this place or, or you can say this 100 has been transferred here and finally temp has been transferred to number 0 so this t 200 has been transferred here then to this number when 200 has been given to the temporary now this can be 100 can be transferred here finally what t has can be transferred here so it is actually swapping so when you see the number it will be 200 and 100 if you show 0 and 25 because they have actually swapped the places. So, 200, 100. This is array again 26, 0, 2, 25 and this is showing A. What is this A? A is a character. But when you put a single quotes on A, that means it will become an ASCII value. And when you add the ASCII value to this I, you are actually incrementing the addresses. So, you are going to the next location and adding this value. You are adding the ASCII number to I, means ASCII number to I. So, you are actually adding 65 this capital A is 65, 65 with 0, 65 with 1 and you are trying to print the percent C. So, you will get 65 and A, then you will get 66 and B like this. So, this will be the output 65 to 90 and A to Z. This is again an array and this array is having a dimension 50. Now, you are going from 0 to 48. So, you are, are you missing something? Actually, when you reach this point, you will be uh, assigning because I will be what? I will be actually, uh, because if you go ahead of this, it will be I plus plus, it will be 49. So, this 49 will be there. And if you uh, just put in these values, 0 to 48 and you see that I is given to sub I and sub I is, is printed. So, it, this is general idea that 0, 1, 2, till 48 will be printed but because you are going out of the range that is 49 since I take a value 49 when it reaches that state point out the errors in the following program segment this is uh, int char mixed so you cannot have integer and character together for an array it can be either integer it can be either character we have an array a10 and you are trying to go from 1 to 10 so actually you jumping the the bounds so array bounds are exceeded because for 10 if you start with 1 and go to 10 this subscript of uh, array always starts with 0 and goes up to 9 in this case n minus 1 10 is there so n minus 1 so 0 to 9 this is size scan of size air size and you are printing the array value but the issue here is the this dimension of the array cannot be a variable it cannot be a variable so there is an error dimension of array should be constant and all declaration should be at the beginning now answer the following an array is a collection of what an array is uh, similar data type and uh, they are arranged or they are saved in the memory in the contiguous or you can say sequential manner so the answer would be three the same data type placed next to each other in memory is this a correct array declaration this is not because array is known by the square brackets so use of this in place of this is incorrect here which element of array does this expression reference num4 as we know this is going to give you fifth number why because this subscript is starting from zero so it will be always this n minus one so y minus one will be four what is the difference between the fives in these two expressions first of all this is the you can say 5 here is the array size and this is actually a particular element of uh, that array. So, second would be the correct answer. The fir first is array size, second is particular element. Now, true and false, the array int num26 has 26 elements. Yes, exactly true, 26 elements. The expression num1 designates the first element in the array. No, it designates the second element. So, it is false. The expression num27 designates the 28th element in the array. True, 25 numbers are entered from the keyboard into an array. Write a program to find out how many of them are positive, how many are negative and how many are even and how many are odd. So, what we will do here is, we will write a program. This is a comment. We will take some uh, these counters actually. We are making some variables. This neg, neg for negative, we have taken it as a counter. So, this starts with 0, we will add negative and neg plus plus when we encounter any negative value. Similarly, for the positive odd and even value. So, we enter the 25 elements of the array and we take it in scanf. Percent D and percent num i because this is our array. We go 
from 0 to 24 because we wanted 25 element now once this is done we will simply use the conditional operator you can say ternary operator or ternary condition how if this number i is less than 0 if this is less than 0 we increase the negative point because the number is less than 0 that means it is negative so negative plus plus otherwise we will add increment the positive value so positive plus plus next is if the number this is modulo 2 and you have to put one more thing is equal to 0 if the number is divisible by 2 modulo is 2 we say it is uh, even actually so let us make it not it is not equal to 0 we will increment the no odd value odd counter otherwise we say even count now we print them this is the program implement the following procedure to generate prime numbers from 1 to 100 this procedure is called the sieve of erato erratosthenes i i am not able to pronounce it i'm so sorry for that but uh, this is something very important you see this program is very good because the sieve of erratosthenes says that first of all you have to fill an array number 100 from 1 to 100 now starting from the second entry you'll start from the second entry in the array and you set all the multiples to zero means if you have a number three then three all the three will be put zero or will be replaced with zero set to zero three into two six will be set to zero three into three nine will be set to zero and so on and so forth i hope you got the idea all the multiple of three all the mul multiple of then let the next entry they are going to be placed set to zero and you have to proceed to the next non-zero element because there when you put all the three multiples there will be more zeros so you will get uh, many zeros now you have to go to this next element which is non-zero and you will set the multiples to zero and you have to repeat this step till you have set up the multiplies to all these non-zero elements to zero so all the mul multiples has to be zero that becomes zero so only the elements which are left only the elements which are left those will be your prime number and you have to count that numbers also right so let me uh, give you an idea if this is an array i'm just giving you an idea we start with say three we have nine here we have six here and we have here five say this is 10 and this is uh, say 20 this is four this is say 11 okay now we'll start with three and we see all the multiples of three what are the multiples of three three itself so it will become zero multiple of three is nine also it will become zero three to the six so this will also become zero now we go to five multiple of five itself zero then five to the ten zero five into twenty zero and then five into there is no other val value so we go to 4 4 into 4 0 now we have no multiple so 11 is only left this is the prime i hope you got the idea so we'll start with the uh, you know getting the numbers and we know that in this array we just have to put 1 to 100 this is being given in the uh, program itself. so we stay 0 to 99 and we'll, we'll just put the values from because this is starting from 0 we'll put the i plus 1 because we have to start with 1 200 we cannot play 0 this is not given in the question so this is i plus 1 all all the values from 1 to 100 will be stored in the array now the second thing is if the number is not zero we start from one till 99 we start with one till 99 okay and if the number is not zero if it is zero will not will not go inside this loop or this uh block otherwise we go inside the block this number into 2 minus 1 we take it as k and now these are the steps this are uh, this number is the step so every time from the k that is from this point from this point which we have taken as k till 99 with this step with this step because if 3 is there 3 plus 3 is what 6 3 plus 3 plus 3 is what 9 like this so we are taking this step exactly this number we are adding the same number but we have to go in steps and this uh, k we have to go to k because of we have already seen the previous one so we have to go number into 2 minus 1 and uh, put all the multiples as 0 that is what we are doing here and after we come out of the loop we can just print all the numbers which are not zeros and th those will be our prime number. arrays pointers and arrays and pointers so what will be the output of this program this is 8 and 1 to 10 and you are trying to print the value and there will be no problem because this will be a1 you are actually doing what you are put, uh, placing a1 you are scanning the value so if i scan the value as 10 as 20 as 30 there will be no problem you could have started with zero that will be much better much better but since we are starting with one there will be also no problem a a this a0 will have some garbage garbage value so here only thing is going on but there are certain problems if the this output is there you might be surprised why we have not started with zero and we have no m percent in this scanner so i don't go with this i say that there will be an error in this program b is 0 20 0 45 then this is an array uh, then you have assigned the name of the array to k so now k is a pointer k is pointing to now this array the first element now from 0 to 4 you are trying to print the print the value at k so value at k is what because k is pointing here 
B is this, B is also pointing to 0, K is also pointing to 0, B and K both are pointing to 0. And now you are just saying K plus plus, so you are moving to next location and showing the value. So 0, 20, 0, 45 will be printed. Next is 1, this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Now you have uh, passed the A that is the address of the first element to this function and also some value that is the number of value that is 5. Okay. From 0 to n, because this pointer has taken the, the address of this uh, array, from 0 to n, this is the value at i, the b plus i, means value at b plus i. So, what is the value? Because b is simply pointing to this, b is taking the address of a. So, b is pointing. Now, first i is 0 here. So, b plus 0, this is star. So, you are actually finding the, trying to find out the value at b, which is 2. Now, you are adding 5 also and you are assigning it to that value. So now this will this 2 plus 5, 2 will be added with 5 and kept here only. So this will be 7. First value will be 7. Again, same thing has been done for the second value. So 4 plus 7 and that will be placed here. So 2 plus 7, then the next value, oh sorry, 5, 5 has been added. 2 plus 5 is uh, 7, 4 plus 5 is 9, 6 plus 5 is 11 and 8 plus 5 is 13 and 10 plus 5 is 15. This is how it is shown. Next is we have, uh, we have taken some value a5 and we have assigned or initialized in the loop. How we have initialized a i is equal to 2 into i. So, first of all, 0 will be there. Let me make an array for you. Okay. First is 2 into 0, that is a i, a I will be having 0. Then this is 1, 2 into 1, 2 will be there. Then says the next one will be 2 into 2, that is it will be 4. So, there are how many values? There are 5 values. So, 0, 2, 4, and 6, and 8. All right. This is fine. Now, you are sending the address or a name of the array to the function. Now, you are inside the function, you have taken it in a pointer. Now, you are moving same way to this because now this uh, x is also pointing here previously a was also pointing to this one now x is also pointing this a and x both are pointing to the first what you are doing here is star x plus i this means star x plus i is equal to star x plus i plus 2. So, the value at x plus i, first of all, it will be 0. So, this will be simply star x. So, value at x is 0 plus 2. So, you are adding 2 here. And now, you are putting it again back. So, you are adding 2 here, 2 to 0 and putting it back. Similarly, you are Putting what? You are doing what? You are adding 2 to 2, that is 4. Putting it here. You are adding 2 to 4 and putting it back. 6. 6 plus 2, 8. 8 plus 2, 10. So, when you print it, when you print it here, it will be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. But how this 16 has come? See, B is 16. You have, you have passed this B here. Why? And you are incrementing every time because this is 16. And you have 5. So, finally, this will be 16 and this will be printed. Now, we have a static int A5. You are trying to print the value 0 to 4. So, this simply, you know, static means initialization of the array value with 0. If you put static, all these will be 0. So, that will be printed 0, 0, 0. This is an array. Now, this is an important question. See, let me show you the answer first so that you will be able to appreciate what we are trying to learn. First of all, we have k equal to 1 and first is plus plus a1. What is a1? This is 0 value. This is 1, 2, 3, 4. a1 is what? 1, right? This one. So, 1 plus plus. I will get value what? I will get value as 2. Okay, this is fine. I get value of 2. But when you print i, you will get 3. How? Because i is here also. So, I will be incremented one more time. So, it will be i plus plus. So, 2 plus plus will be 3. So, you see 3 is i. That is done. i is completed. Now, let us come to j. Let us see what j shows. Where is j? j. Now, what is j being assigned? j has been assigned. j is equal to a1 plus plus. j has been assigned a1 plus plus. What is a1? a1 is what? a1 has become, because a1 is already incremented, it has become 2. Now, this 2 is assigned to j. It will be incremented again, but j will take 2 value. Because first, this because this is post uh, increment. So, a1 will be assigned to j, then this will be increment. So, a1 has already become 2 here. So, 2 will be printed. Okay, this is done. Now, let us come to m. Okay, now m is, as we saw here, i has become what value before before printing 3 what a this a has become i have explained you just now this is a i plus plus right a i plus plus i plus plus means you are i has already become 2 this is 0 this is 1 this is 2 i plus plus will be later on incremented but a i will be assigned to m which is actually a 2 which is 15. So, 15 will be printed. Error. Uh, what is the error? These are only 6 value. You are, you are going from 0 to 25. So, you are actually exceeding the array bound. What is the array here or problem here? The problem is again, this is 50. You have to start with 0 and go up to 49. You cannot not, you cannot go up to 50. It should be rather not this. This is equal to should not be there. It should be only i less than 50. Then it is going to work. 
and moreover it should start from 0 then we have 10 20 30 40 50 this is j now this j is you are giving address a is the name of the array and you are giving it to j so you are assigning the address to j and j is not a pointer variable so the error lies here so it has to be star j it should be a pointer these are a certain float values in an array this is a float pointer you are assigning a the name of this array to j so it will take it no problem j plus 4 it is also good but the problem here is all are percent d first of all j is a, j is a pointer so it has to be it has to be under percent u and these these two should be percent f this is the problem now again uh, these this uh, very important uh, question is and it uh, signifies or it tells you what all are not possible on an uh, on pointers operation j is equal to j into 2 this is not allowed j, k is equal to k by 2 so multiplication by a constant and division by a constant is not allowed not allowed on pointers so this is these are the problem max equal to 5 arr max as i just said previously also in earlier question you cannot have a variable as a dimension so this is not acceptable array array dimension cannot be a variable what will happen if you try to put so many values into an array when you initialize it that the size of the array is exceeded nothing is going to happen system is going to mal malfunction because you are crossing the limits or you are you know these these things are not checked by the compiler this is the logical thing you have to check it by yourself what will happen if you put too few elements in an array when you initialize it nothing the other values will be uh, they will be unused and they will be given uh, if you have made it static zero otherwise you will have garbage value what will happen if you assign a value to an element of an array whose subscript exceeds the size of the array what will happen the simple uh, discussion and the interpretation is other data may be overwritten they will be overwritten when you pass an array as an argument to a function what actually get passed see all the all the values they never get passed only the address of the first location get passed you are sending okay this is the address or this is the starting point of the array now you deal with it so you are actually passing the address of the array but uh, this is also correct address of the first element of the array this is also correct which of these are reasons for using pointers first of all to manipulate parts of the array and then we know uh, pointers are always fast and then you want to return more than one value from a function then you use the array if you don't initialize a static array what will be the element set static means the elements will be initialized to zero the answer is this zero address of a floating point variables is always a whole number yes exactly address of a floating point address of an integer address of a character they all are whole numbers which of the following is the correct way of declaring a float this is absolutely wrong for a pointer again this is wrong this is the correct one second is the correct one add the missing statement for the following program to print 35 first of all this is a pointer pointer is given given the value 35 now you want to print print the ptr so how to print the ptr because here this if you uh, this is the value at ptr value at ptr is 35 now you want to print uh, this ptr so what you can do Either you can replace j by tar ptr, this will also do, or you can do one more thing assign j as 35 and say ptr as m percent of j because j has been assigned 35, and now you can say ptr tar print here. So this is how it can be done. This int s5 is one dimensional array of integers, which of the following refers to the third element in the array. The third element always, you know, third means 3 minus 1, 2, and uh, we want to find out the element so this we rule out because these are actually addresses this i suppose is the correct answer first one now write a program which perform the following task initialize an array 10 elements pass the entire array to function modify multiply each element of array by 3 return the control to the main and print the new array element in main so this is a program to pass the entire array and multiply each element by 3 this is stdio h conio dot h now you come inside you make these as static this is not very necessary but still we have initialized it with 10 value and if you want to show the original value or the values which has been uh, placed inside the array you can just make a loop 0 to 10 this is less than 10 and you just print the value when you print the value that means these are the value which are being uh, given to initialize now you make a function modify pass the array or the name of the name of this array or the first value and comma 10 what is this 10 this is the damage and then you can print the value after uh, this function has done its activity you can just print it but the main uh, intention or main uh, point of discussion is this function so when you pass when you pass the address of the first element of the name of the array you will take it in a pointer and this is the dimension so now 
every value this arr this is the arr is the address now value at arr is star arr you are multiplying it with 3 and you are putting it again back into the value at arr so this is what is done every value will be, will be multiplied by 3 and will be assigned to the same value and then you go to the next next location and you do it again again and again till you reach the end and now you can print these values. The screen is divided into 25 rows and 80 columns. The characters which are displayed on the screen are stored in a special memory which is called as VDU, Visual Display Unit or Video Display Unit. Each character displays on the screen occupies 2 bytes. So there are, there are 2 bytes in video memory. The first of these bytes, this first one contains the ASCII value of the character being displayed and this second one contains the color in which the character is displayed. For instance, the ASCII value of character represented on the 0th, say 0, uh, column and zero row on the screen is stored at 0xb8 and uh, followed by 60. So the color of this character will be uh, present in this location, next location. Similarly for row 0 and column 1 it will be plus 2 plus 3 and so on and so forth. So with this knowledge you have to write a program which when executed would keep converting every capital letter on the screen to small case letter and every small case letter to capital letter. The procedure should stop the moment the user hits a key from the keyboard. So this is called the uh, rampant virus calling dancing dolls. Uh, if you have a monochrome adapter which I do, don't believe you have, you use this instead of this. Right. The program is quite simple, quite easy. We start with an array or we can say this is far is specifically for some assembly concern. So don't worry about that. We have included the DOS.h for this key, KB hit that is the keyboard hit and for this also. So char far SCR. This is the starting point as given in the question also. While any keyboard is not hit means any key is not hit. What we will do? We know that the size is 80 by 25 and every every uh, location takes 2 bytes. So the memory will be 4000. This is required. So what will be our looping? We start with 0, go up to 3999 and every time we jump 2 because 2 bytes, 1 byte this, second byte this. This is for ASCII value, this is the color of this value. Now, we check for this SCR. If it is between A to Z, if it is between A to Z, we add 32. We we make it uh, smaller. Otherwise, if it is smaller, means if it is between small A and small Z, we subtract 32. This is what we have. More than one dimension, this is, uh, we have to find out the output of the following programs. This is an array, two dimensional array. And as we know, in two dimensional array also, it is being stored in memory in sequential or contiguous manner. So, what we need to print here, this is star n, which is the address of n. Star s means address of the first element of 2. And this is, uh, this needs to be percent u. And n33, because this, this will be pray. This has to be first person u and this is going to give you the address. So the base address will come. How about this n33? There is no number called n33 because this goes up to only n22. This is the maximum limit. So this will come. This will be 1. But for this there will be a garbage value. So first base address, garbage value and 1. Again we have the same array. Now we have a pointer also and i. Now we are assigning n the name of the array to ptr. ptr is actually the, the address or you can say a pointer which is keeping the address of the first element. Now you are moving from 0 to 8 and you are printing star ptr plus i. So see ptr plus i means ptr plus 0. First of all this ptr, ptr is having the address of n so it will be pointing to this 2 will be shown. Now it will be 1. So value at ptr plus 1 with this will be the next memory location and ptr plus 1 this is star is 4. So 4 will come, 3 will come and likewise. So all these numbers will come one by one. Again this same same two dimensional array 3 by 3 is there and the similar situation is there we are we are making a for loop or running a for loop for the row and for every row we have three columns and we are saying nij this is the subscript so all the values will come 2, 4, 3 like this and when we say n plus i that is we are going to first row and then again going to the all values of the uh, columns of that row and printing out the value at this because essentially this n is the address so n plus i is the address now star means value at that value at this address so you will get the values like 2 to 1 in both the cases 2 to 1 in both the cases we have to point out the error this is a two dimensional array now we cannot just leave this we have to at least give the number of columns so problem is while declaring a two dimensional array mentioning the column dimension is necessary then again we have an array and as we saw just now that the column is, has to be given the row can be skipped so the problem is here by declaring the two dimensional array mentioning the column dimension is necessary how will you initialize a three dimensional array this three 
3, 2, 1. How will you refer the first and last element in this array? So, there are different methods. First of all, uh, 3, 2, 3 means first of all, this is the first, first uh, two dimensional array. This is the second two dimensional array and this is the third two dimensional array. So, this is how we initialize three dimensional array. We have initialized to this to some value and these are, see, these are three. So, 1, 2 and 3, 1, 2, 3. Actually, I should write 0, 1, 2. And how about 2? Because there are two rows, so one row, two row, one row, two row, one row, two row. So all have two rows and then they have three columns. So one, two, three, one, two, three and one, two, three. Three columns. Okay. Then the first element is simply 0, 0, 0. So you can just say A, A, R, R, 0, 0, 0. The last element is just uh, take n minus 1. So this will be 3 minus 1 that is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1 and 3 minus 1 is 2. So R, A, R, R, 2, 1, 2. This will be the last one. And if you want to use the pointer, then 3 star A, R, R will give you the first value. And then A, R, R plus 2, we are taking this value. A, R, R plus 2 star plus 1 star plus 2 star. So this will give you the last one. Write a program to pick up the largest number from any five row by five column metric. So what is the uh, logic of finding out the la largest value? Say I have five, two, nine. I have to find out the largest value. So I take the largest value as five first. So I say elic largest value is five. I assign the first value. Then I compare this five with two. That is I'm comparing this L with two. If it is smaller, then it is okay. If it is larger, we replace 5, 5 by 2. Since 2 is not smaller, uh, 2 is smaller than 5, it is not larger. Then we go to the next number. We compare 9 with the L, that is 5. And if we compare, we see 9 is greater. So now we assign 9 to L, 9 to L. So L will have 9. And this we, this we continue till the largest value is being uh, find, found out. So same uh, logic we are going to use because essentially in the array, it may be any, any matrix or any way, they are stored contiguously and in one by one manner in the memory. So, we will start with a comment. This is stdio conio. Now, this we have initialized. So, this is 5 by 5. So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 rows. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and this again 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, four this 4, 5 rows and 5 columns. Now, here we started with the first element A00. We say the first element is the biggest one. I, we don't know but we are saying it, it has to be a big, um, biggest one. Then we are going to compare it. Then we are going to compare with it with every next element. And if, if the next element, if at all the next element is higher, higher, we assign that number now to big. That is what we are doing. So, what we are doing here is we have started with this for loop for the rows and then this for every column of every row. And then we said if this aij, that number is greater than big, then we replace big with that particular number which is greater than big. Otherwise, we don't go inside. And finally, when we loop through this whole, this big will be the final highest number this will be the big and you print it. Write a program to obtain a transpose of 4 by 4 matrix. The transpose of a matrix is obtained by exchanging the elements of each row with elements of the corresponding column. I will give you just a short example. See, I have this value 2, 5, 9, 8. What is the, this is 0, 1, 0 row, first row and this is 0 column, first column. Now, I wish to, I wish to uh, exchange these, exchange this row to column and column to row. So, what I need to do is, I have to keep this row and make it as a column. So, this 2, 9 should become 2, 5. And again, this 9, 8 has to become the second row. So, it, it has to be 9, 8. So, what I am doing here is, this 5 is to be swapped with 9. 2 and 8 remain same. So, the diagonal value remains same. But, we are exchanging these and this value. These and these values. That, the logic will be like this one. So, STDIO, CONIO. And, uh, we say, we make a matrix. It can be generalized for any n value. So, we enter values for 4 by 4 matrix. So, we are entering the value. So, I will take it in m% mat. 0 to 3, 0 to 3, we are taking the value. So, this is just taking the value. Now, the actual thing is, before we go ahead, we will show the matrix which has been entered by the user. So, this is simply showing from 0 to 3, 0 to 3, the matrix. Next is the, the transpose of the matrix. So, what is the transpose of the matrix? Let us see the transpose of the matrix. First of all, we have started with 0 and we gone to 3. Now, the next is, the next is, we have start, we have taken i plus 1. Means, see, I am just giving you an example. What I am trying to suggest here is, when I am taking this 0 first row, then I go to j equal to i plus 1. That is j is, j is the next one, right? So, I am exchanging these two now. These two I am exchanging. So, what, how to exchange? Mat i plus j is to, to be given to uh, temp and then mat j i. This is, say, this is, this was 0, 0. This was 0, 0 and what was, uh, uh, this is, this is not to be changed. 0, 0, 1, 1 will not be changed. This is what? This is first row and first, first row and first column. So, this is 1, 0 and what was this? This one? this number. We have to exchange this. This is the 0th row and 1st column. So, I am exchanging 1, 0 with 0, 1. So, ij has to be 
replaced with zero. Uh, IJ has to be repla replaced with JI. I hope you got the idea. That is what we are doing here. The mat IJ has to be given to temp. The mat JI has to be given to IJ. JI has to be given to uh, IJ. And then temp has to be given to GI. So we are replacing these two values. We are replacing these two values. This and this. So now finally, when we are, you are done with this, you can just print the transpose matrix like the way you showed just now. This is the transpose of the matrix. Uh, those readers who are from science and engineering background, write programs for the following problem. We have to write a program to add two matrices. Adding two matrices, it can be any matrices. I'll give an example. The addition of a matrix is quite simple. The corresponding ij has to be added. This if it is 2, 3, 5, 1, 0, 2, 1, 8. So how to add? 2 plus 5. This has to be 2 plus 5. This, this will be 7. And 3 plus 1 is 4. 0 plus 1 is 1. 2 plus 8 is 10. So this is the result. So we have to have three matrix. First, matrix second matrix and finally the matrix where we are we are going to put, put the final addition so first of all we have to make a matrix mat1 mat2 and mat3 we'll enter the values in the first matrix from 0 to 5 0 to 5 m percent mat1 ij then 0 to 5 0 to 5 mat2 ij m percent so two matrices have been taken up and now you want to show it you can also show it this is the first matrix this is the second matrix which the which the user have actually given now the thing comes here is again we go from 0 to 5 0 to 5 we just have to do mat1 ij plus mat2 ij. This is the whole crux of this program. This is the only line which you have to worry about. Others you will be able to do, I hope. That is quite simple. But this is mat1 plus mat1 ij plus mat2 ij. You have to keep it in mat3 ij, right? And then you just show it. This is mat3 ij, you show it. This is how you add and show. Now write a program to multiply any 2, 3 by 3 matrix or any n by n matrix. So how to multiply? For multiplication, I'll give you an idea. If I have two matrices, in multiplication of matrices, I have 1, 2, 5, 1, 2, 1, 0, 1. First, we take the first row and first column. That is 0 row and 0 column. Okay. We multiply 1 with 2, 1 into 2, plus 2 into 0, plus 2 into 0. This has to be placed here. Then, first row and first column is complete. Then, we multiply this row with this column. That is 1 into 1, plus 2 into 1. We have to place it here. Again, this, this row is completed. Now, we go to the second row. 5 into 2, plus 1 into 0 to be placed here and now 5 into 1 plus 1 into 1 will be placed here. This is how the multiplication goes. So we ought to have one more thing that the column of this say if I say a into b this is the a into b is the dimension or order and we say this is uh, c into d. So if we want to multiply it this b has to be equal to c. The column of first row has to be equal to the row of the second method. This has to be made very clear. Now these two are equal so we will have a very a, uh, we have a variable k. We'll introduce a variable that. So we'll first of all we'll make uh, three matrices: matrix one, matrix two, matrix three. In the first one, the first one will enter the values m percent mat one ij. Then we'll enter the second second matrix. So we are taking it m percent mat two. Now you can just show the matrix first and second. Now here comes the actual scenario. As I said, we have to multiply the first row with the first column. So when we multiply this element with this, actually there are three. So let us take this example. This with this into plus this into this plus this into this. So we have taken a sum equal to 0. We are doing exactly the same stuff. We are adding it. But what we are doing here is mat ik is multiplied by mat, mat kj. So i is the row, k is the column and k is what we just told you. k is that value which remains to be constant for both the rows and columns or both the matrix. So this doesn't, this ha, this will not change. That is why we, we want the column of the first matrix has to be equal to the row of the first matrix, second matrix. So mat ik into mat 2 kj, this is the whole, this is the whole concept here. You just have to understand this. Okay. Then just add them sum and finally just save this sum into mat ij, this particular value. And again, go back and say sum equal to 0. So every time you do, you will get a sum for the next one. This by this. So you can just put it and that will be placed in the third matrix. And no, now you can just show that third matrix. Write a program to sort all the elements of a 4x4 four four matrix. So how to sort the element? We can we can use the simplest one, which is the which is the 4x4 four four matrix, 4x4 four four matrix or any n by n matrix by bubble sort. So how to sort? Say 2, 5, 1, 3. I want to sort it. I will compare 2 with 5, which is bigger. 5 is bigger. Now I'll compare 2 with 1, which is bigger. 2 is bigger, so it remains like this. 5, 2, 1, 3. Now I compare 1 with 3, which is bigger. 1 will find its place, the lowest one. Or you can also say I can um, I can do it in the ascending or descending both order. So you can compare it and you can keep it here because if you want the highest to come, two and five, which is bigger, uh, five is bigger. So let it be there. Five and one, which is bigger, five is bigger. So I have to replace it. So five comes here, one goes there. Now five and three we compare, which is bigger, five. So at first at first iteration, 
the highest number will come. So we will leave this number and deal with the next other number. S same thing we will do. Compare the first value with the next next value. Then this value will to the next value and depending upon the less than or equal to, we will shift them or we will swap them. So this is 4 by 4 matrix. Let us enter the 4 by 4 matrix 0 to 4, 0 to 4, ampersand mat ij. We are entering the 4 by 4 that is 16 values. Again, whatever you have entered, you can show it using the same loop, looping system and mat ij has to be shown. Now, the basic thing is happening here. We start with the first value that is we are assigning the matrix address to arr. Now, every time we start with 0, we take the second number. We start with 0 because we have we know that in internally this 4 by 4 will be like this. It will not be like 4 by 4 in the memory. It will not be like this. No, it will be like this. So, I am comparing each value with the next value and finally, I will leave then one, one value. That is why we have taken 15 here and 16 here and again Every time I have to take i j equal to i plus 1. So, first value has to be compared with the second value, right? When it becomes 1, this will become 2. So, I am comparing now first with this second value, okay? So, I leave that first value. So, first value will be our, uh, at the first iteration, first value, value will be the highest. Next time, the second value will be the highest. So, we are left with these values. That is why we will check the first, this one with this one now. So, now we are comparing every value with the other value. And if it, it is greater, then we are just we are just swapping them. So this is the way of swapping. This is ARR plus I. This is ARR plus B, J, and this is ARR plus I. And we are taking T2, ARR plus J. I and J, you have to be very clear because we are just taking the first value with the second value. Once this one iteration is done, one is this is done. Now we are comparing this to this value. So this is how finally you can have a matrix which is called the we have used the bubble sort, and this will be finally your sorted value. Now write a program to obtain the determinant value of 5 by 5 matrix. Determinant is if I uh, tell you that this is my my determinant say 2, 5, 6, 9. What will be the determinant? 2 into 9 minus 6 into 5. If I make it 3 by 3, let me add some more, more value. 1, 2, 5, 2. So I will take one row, any of the row or any of the column. So we will take the first row, right? Now when we take the first row, when we found, find out the determinant, it has to be minus 1 to the power i plus j that is row and column that will decide whether we have to take the plus power or negative power. For this it will be the plus power, for 5 it will be negative power, for 3 it will be a plus power. Why? Because this is 0, 0th row, this is first row, this is second row. So 0, this is 0, this is 1, this is 2. So 0 plus 0 is minus 1 to the power 0 that will be 1. So 2 will have the the sign as plus. Phi will have what? Phi will have minus 1 to the power. What is, where, where does phi lie? 0 and 1. So, 0 plus 1 will be 1. Minus 1 to the power 1 is 1. So, minus, this phi will be minus and this same goes for 0 and 2. 2 will have plus. This is how uh, we take each each value and when we take 2, we ignore these, this row and column. We take 9, 2, 2, 5. So, 9, 5, 9 is 45 minus 2 to the 4. When we take 5, we ignore this row and this column. We take 6 into 5 minus 1 into 2. When we take this, we ignore these two values. This 6 into 2 minus 9 into 1. This is quite clumsy, but we'll, we'll manage it. Now, let us take the 3 by 3 matrix first. So, 0 to 2, 0 to 2, ampersand AIJ. This is, we are just taking the values first of all. Now, you want to, agar, you want to show the value, you can just show the value from 0 to 2, 0 to 2 and AIJ. This is what you can do. So, first taking the value and printing the value. Now, the basic thing which comes here is, please understand, we are taking J as 1, K as 2. We are saying that, okay, we will take 1 particular row or column to expand and depending upon this row and row and column this row and column we will do the uh, de this determinant and we know that the power of minus 1 to the power i plus j how to find out we are using a function power minus 1 to the power i i is what 0 it goes from 0 1 and 2 so it depends on 0 1 2 the power goes see 0 1 and 2 it totally depends on what you are giving, giving here where essentially this this column decides the power the minus sign of this p okay now, P is the power, okay, so you are multiplying it with power P, see, in this whole, the last into is with P. So, this you have known, okay. Now, sum we have taken as 0, every time we will sum it up and place the value somewhere. Now, this is, or somewhere means, determinant is always a single value. So, there will be only one value. So, every time it goes like this, this will be A 0 I. See, we have fixed this 0 and 1 and we have fixed this 2 and 2, means 0 the first value we have fixed it means means we know which row we have to open up and then we have also known that what will be the what will be the these value 1 2 and 2 1 but we have changed the j and k j and k and j and k is 1 and 2 every time we are changing the i so every time this j and k we have fixed up and we are just changing the i so we know which by which row we are opening and this is the concept and we have i have just showed you how to find out the determin determinant and this is how the determin determinant can be known this j has to be made every time zero right because we have to go back again and we start with the 
next value. So this is the determinant of the matrix. So this is all about uh, this chapter. Thank you so much and take care of yourself.